If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more funding for your deals, money for your deals, regardless of what your banker, your mortgage lender, your hard money lender would say, don't go anywhere because you're in the right place. I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for your deals, regardless of your experience. Well, if this is your first time to the show, let me give you a special welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, and this is Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm known as the Private Money Authority, and we're just glad to have you on. This is the show where we talk about all things real estate investing, single family houses, long-term buy and holds, flips, commercial, you name it. However, I will tell you, if, you're first, if this is your first time to the show, most of our focus is on investing in single family houses. Well, on the show here in my lands, I've already lost the count on episodes. Uh, we are up to somewhere around number 130 or so. But nonetheless, here on the show, I have the very best special guest that joined me here on the show to talk about their expertise, their niche, and what they're really, really good at when it comes to real estate investing. And I got another special guest for you here today on the show. But before I bring him on, let me go ahead and fulfill my promise that I'd said just a moment ago. And that is how in the world are we going to plug you into funding for your deals, your real estate deals? Well, again, if you're new to the show, you may not know that uh, I'm pretty good at raising funding for deals. In fact, over 10 years ago, I was cut off from the banks with no notice. And I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money, which again has got nothing to do with your income, your credit, or your experience. And so for the past 10 years, I have not missed out on a deal because I didn't have the funding. So I've got a free online class and we're going to put it right here on the screen and you can go check it out anytime you want to. The free online class, it's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. One more time, that's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com forward slash money podcast. Go check it out. It's free. It'll teach you the five steps that I use to get all the funding for your deals. Now, with that, I got to bring on to you my dear friend. We've known each other now for more than 10 years. And talk about a renaissance man on my lands. I've been referred to as being a renaissance man, but this guy here has got me beat. So before I tell you his name, Mr. X so far, this guy, he is a published author. He's a speaker, copywriter, phenomenal copywriter. He's a coach, a mentor, a marketer, a musician, a poet. Check this out, folks. He is a expert ballroom dance instructor. Beyond that, he's known as being one of the experts in the nation on salsa dancing, world traveler. He's a father internet marketer. He's a voiceover artist. In fact, one of my mentors refers to this guy and my friend as the voice from God. And you're going to hear that in just a second. And of course, the reason he's here on the show today is to talk about his expertise and his niche in real estate investing. Now, the other part of his bio, he's going to have to explain to you because it's like going over my head, but I'm going to give it to you. This guy is also politically incorrect and an insomniac with H, I can't even say it, ADHD, yeah. who specializes in adding massive value to people's lives by helping them overcome limiting beliefs. I'm all into that. He's all about having fun and make more money while improving lifestyles through investing in real estate. Oh, my lands, I thought I had a bio and introduction. Everybody, welcome here to the show. My good friend, Mr. Renaissance Man, who is filthy rich in real estate. Mr. Tony Pearl. Welcome, Thank Tony. You. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you, sir. And after that introduction, I'm wondering who the heck walked in the room? Who are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm telling you. I'm now, look now. Look now. You got to tell me what being politically incorrect, ADHD, insomniac, and adding all that value to real estate investors has got to do with each other. Well, wow, that is the challenge, isn't it? Well, let me see. I don't know if I can summarize it in one thing where I put them all together, but I'll tell you that uh, being politically incorrect, let's just say that uh, I support our current president. That ought to tell you enough right there. 
80. <laughs> well, hey, look, 50 percent of my audience, actually, I think 50, I think it might be more than 50 percent of my audience is going to now be hanging in there with us. But anyway, hey, the rest look, will go bye bye, right? <laughs> that's right. Everybody else just checked out. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, man, the ADHD, I'll just summarize in one word. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. So look, tell everybody, Tony, why are you qualified to talk about real estate investing? That's an excellent question, Jay. Thank you for asking that. So at this point, I've done over 160 deals, all types. I first got into real estate. My very first deal was a lease purchase, which converted to 100% owner financing after a year. The deal was so good. The house was so big and it was so nice. I had to move into it myself. And then I rented rooms out to the local university students at uh, University of Maryland College Park, which is my alum. And I got paid to live in my own house. And then at that time, it, the deal went so well that I didn't do real estate for like four years after that because I was so focused on my career, which at the time was as a model and Latin dance instructor. And that was the last job I'd ever worked, which I retired from in 1999 at the ripe old age of 30 years old. So <laughs> after that, I started my own dance business. I taught all over the place, had my own studio, all that fun stuff. And then I got, as good as something is, you know, however awesome it is, if you have that ADHD, you can get bored with things pretty quickly, which believe it or not, even though dancing is one of the best things I've ever did, then I got bored at it really quickly. So I started getting a hankering for that real estate again. And then 2001, 2002, I got back into it and I've been blowing it up ever since. And basically I did my first real, what made me a millionaire the first time was getting into short sales, subject twos, and a few rehabs. To this day, I really specialize in the pretty houses, working with FISBOs, working with private sellers. Uh, I have worked with a lot of banks, but for some reason, I just really like talking to people and helping them out to structure solutions that work for their houses. And to this point, I've done all kinds of different deals, mainly in the residential real estate market and the area, all over the country, as a matter of fact. Does that answer your question, I hope? <laughs> well, it's a good start. So, World. So let's go, let's go ahead and get on to why I have you on the show. All right. Okay. So ever since I started the show, I have yet to have a guest that really is known for their expertise as you are. And that is, now that doesn't mean I haven't had some guests that are not really good communicators because I think you got to have a certain skill set of communication, but I haven't had a guest that has really analyze what it is that you do about communication with buyers and sellers to establish that kind of rapport. So Tony, I'm just going to turn the mic over to you and I'll interrupt you where I deem appropriate, but tell me in the audience about your three-step approach to communicating and talking with buyers and sellers. Thank you, Jay. I'd be more than happy to. And I appreciate, appreciate once again, your kind of words. So First of all, you uh, heard a few of your podcasts. You've had some amazing, amazing interviews on here and some wonderful communicators in their own right, no doubt about it. What I've done is I've simply taken what has worked for me and many others and made it into a simplistic, simple three-step approach that can work for, it's almost like a magic bullet for talking with anybody at any time whenever you have an interaction that you want to make where you're going to hopefully influence them, you're going to sell them, you're going to do business together and you want to make sure that everything goes smoothly and it's a logical, functional sequence. Now, having said that, if someone is just getting started, can I share a little, a little bit of advice here, if I may? Would that be okay? Sure. Thank you. If someone is just getting started in real estate investing and you really don't know, I mean, you're just trying to figure all this stuff out and you're still fresh, I think that a great way to begin and will carry you for a long time is to use a shortcut to cheat, if you will. And a great way of doing that is to use scripts, okay? Now, there are a lot of different programs that will use scripts, wonderful scripts that will help you get through the conversation and help guide you. However, me personally, I've noticed that scripts have an inherent flaw built into them. You know what that is? What? They don't allow the person, if you're reading the script, what happens if someone throws you a curveball? That's not in the script. What do I do? Ah, you freak out. <laughs> you know what comes to mind on that, Tony? And that is, you know, when and I've used scripts in the past. Me yeah. personally, I like bullet points better. But but when I've used scripts in the past, 
based on what you just said, it reminds me, I always get my lines right, but they never get their lines right. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that before. Yeah, you're not reading on the script, Mr. Seller. Clay, please come back. You're supposed to say this at this point. <laughs> but actually, if you look at it, scripts do take the, uh, the chunking down of the conversation and they put it into a workable format. However, a lot of times if you're new, it's very frustrating if you get taken off the script and you don't know what to say when they say it. An expert, a true professional will recognize what's going on and be able to come back to that part of the script and get back on that straight line to get to the resolution in the close, of course. So I've found a way of taking, I guess you could say you could take scripts, memorize them if you want, keep them in front of you if you want, but just basically if you have like that bullet point, I love bullet points too, Joy. Jay, I totally agree. But if you can have an idea about Step one, I need to do this. Okay, now we need to move to this part. And then we're going to go to the closing part right here. And it just makes it really, really simple and easy. Okay, so if I may share that three-step approach with you now, it basically works like this. The first step, simple thing is, is you want to introduce yourself and state what your goals, what your agenda is at the outset of the call. So as soon as you get on the call with whomever it is, let's just say it's a seller, you want to, why the heck are you calling? I mean, don't don't shoot the crap with, uh, with these people. They're, they're getting bombarded by calls and they wanna know who you are, why you're calling and what do you want. So you gotta get that out of the way very quickly and then make sure that you are able to transition to the second step. So if we could do a quick, wanna do a quick role play, Jay? Sure. Okay, you be the seller. I'm uh, the seller. You're the seller, ring, ring, say hello. Hello. Yes, I'm calling about the house at 1348 Maple Leaf Lane. Is it still available? Yeah, well, I, I live here. When you say it's available, what do you mean? I saw this house for sale online. Is it? Are you the one who's selling this house? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still got it for sale. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Great. My name's Tony. What's your name? I'm Jay. Hey, Jay. Nice to talk to you. I appreciate you taking the call today. So listen, I, I see the information about your house in front of me. And would you mind if I just ask you a few questions? I'm really, the reason why I'm calling is I'm really interested in buying a house just like yours in that area. I'm actually an investor. I'd like to add that to my portfolio. Would you mind if I ask you just a few simple questions to see if we can possibly do business today and see if I can buy your house? Sure. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And that's it. That's just a simple example of how to start a phone call like that. Now, me personally, I Good. do like to introduce the fact that I'm an investor because why do I do that? Now, some people may not feel comfortable, and that's totally fine. The reason I like to do that is because, and, and this is an example of a cold call, right? So we've never spoken to them. Our assistant has never spoken to this person. It's a great way to break the ice and get the conversation started. Now, is it possible, actually, is it a fact that we investors are going to be asking the seller several wacky questions that may be a little bit of a departure from the norm if someone is just calling to live in the house? So yeah, yeah, like what's the mortgage information? Bam, there you go, exactly. So to me, this pre-frames the context of the reason why we're gonna be bringing that question up a little bit later on in the call. So yeah. it lessens the resistance. Yeah, now let me give you an observation, Tony, and I was gonna say it before we role played, but I'm glad I didn't because I wanted to see how you played it out. So you introduced yourself, and by the way, I wanna encourage folks at the end of this show, because you're going, you, we got three points here. You're going to go over. Go back, everybody. Whether you're watching visually or you're just listening, you know, to iTunes or Google Play, go back and listen to this role play in the scripting or the words or the tone and the tone that Tony is using when he's framing the call. I mean, we could spend a whole day talking about watch and analyzing what's really going on here. But like, for example, you got right to the point, you at a, a very important point that you that, that I picked up on is that you asked permission to ask questions. You didn't just jump right in to, you know, an interrogation, if you will. OK, you uh, you were pleasant. I, I like framing yourself as you are as a real estate investor. But you know what? There's something you didn't ask me in that role play that I am so glad you didn't ask because it drives me nuts. I can guess what it is. Oh, my word. I bet you know what it is. It drives me nuts when somebody that I've never talked to in my life 
How are you today? Ask, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Nothing screams salesman more than life. how are you today, sir? How are oh. you today? And I'm going. Don't ask me how I'm doing because you could give a flip. I'm doing terrible. Then you're just supposed to continue the. That's a, that's a major curve. That's a knuckleball right there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I really appreciate, and I want I want our audience here to get this to where everything you're saying is authentic. It's genuine. You're not beating around the bush. You're being respectful of the other person's time on the other end of the phone, even though they have their property for sale and they want to sell it. You're just not coming up with this, you know, not genuine, you know, you know right. what I'm talking about. Anyway, let me add a little more to that. Jay. Thank you so much for, for distinguishing those things and calling them out because a lot of times when you hear this stuff, you can take it for granted and it's just so easy to gloss and glance right by it without paying attention to it. So one of the things is that um, I wrote an article very recently called uh, I Can Tell by the Tone of Your Voice. Right. I read it. It's an excellent oh, article. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yes. So the tonality of your voice is everything. You want to do something that will help make you stand out, to help make you be different in a sea of ordinary, normal, where everyone sounds the same. Hi, how are you today? Oh my gosh, you know, right? So we do things a little bit differently so we can stand out. So at the, by the end of the call, that person is thinking, wow, this person is different. There's something about them I really like. I feel comfortable uh, talking to them. I feel like opening up and telling them all my deepest secrets. <laughs> and one of the things that really, 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 I'll give you a secret right here, really helps make that happen. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I got my seatbelt on. All right, strap in, my friend. It's, I've already given it away, basically. It's the tone of your voice. Can you convey emotion? Can you convey compassion? Can you be relatable simply by talking to someone? Now, a lot of other salespeople say that the best way to develop rapport with someone is, hey, talk about the pictures on the wall. Talk about their grandkids. Ask them how they're doing today. Talk about you know what they had for lunch and, and the weather and the sports. And those things all do have a place, to be honest course at the right time however we can shortcut and bypass all that stuff yeah when you're doing that the other person on the other end of the phone or across the desk the whole time is saying would you just shut up and get on with it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you spent a little bit of time uh, right here on the east coast <laughs> <laughs> so but, but you know what there's another thing before we get to your point number two but there's another thing that you did and that right up front, you stated your objective and you said, I'm a, you stated who you are. You said, I'm a real estate investor. And you said, you, you didn't say it, but you inferred it. You inferred. And the reason I'm calling you is because I'm interested in buying properties in your area to add to my portfolio. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, that's like, you know, if I were on the other end of the phone, it'd be like, oh, they just took their filter off and told me a little bit about themselves and who they are and what they want to accomplish, which when I sense you took your filter off, I'm going to take my filter off. You take your filter off first. I'm going to take my filter off. And now we can really connect. You agree? Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. And that brings a very good point, Jay. Absolutely. We don't want to have like a I'm talking down to you, or you're talking down to me, or I'm disrespecting you, or vice versa. Let's just have an honest, quick meeting of the minds and see if we can get our lay our cards on the table and possibly do business. If it's not a good fit, hey, I'm not going to take it personally. That's okay. In fact, I'd rather someone tell me no up front so we can save each other's time and just part as friends. And that's I another love. part. That's an advanced part of the introduction that I won't share today. And there's a couple other pieces, but for the most part, you get the gist of what we're trying to say right here with the introduction. The first part is just setting the stage, setting the tone, letting this person know, hey, here's what I'm looking to do. Can we possibly do business and move forward? I love it. Step two. Step two is the qualification stage. Now, this is huge. This is where a lot of people really drop the ball or misunderstand things. Because I tell you, I've worked with hundreds of students uh, in real estate investing, Jay, and a lot of times the, the brand new people come out and they say, how, they ask me, how do I convince someone to sell away their house with owner financing? How do I convince them to do this? And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa there, Bubba. You're not going to convince anybody of anything. You've got to qualify them first to see if it's going to be a good fit for our solution. Because if it's not, 
it's just going to be uh, beating your head against the wall and it's not a good fit. It's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. We got to be the professional in the room to find out what their situation is and how they qualify for which of our solutions. And by the way, if we start in by saying, hey, let me tell you about all the great ways that we buy houses. Let me give you a seminar. Let me tell you about owner financing, lease purchase, subject to all this stuff. I mean, oh my God, are you kidding me? What better way to blow yourself out of the water, shoot yourself in the foot and put your foot in your mouth all, in the same, all at the same time than by doing something like that? We are the professionals. We are the ones who are qualifying them, not the other way around. And I know you know the answer to this, Jay. I'm just going to ask it for fun anyway. Who is in control of a conversation? The one who asks the questions. Damn, baby, exactly. You are as smart as you are handsome. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and but here's the thing, you know, it's such a cliche, but I'm sorry, cliches are cliches because most of the time they're the truth. But the old cliche is nobody cares what you know until they know how much you care. Yep. And if you're and if it, and there's an art, really, to questioning people back to without it coming across as an interrogation. Like you know, one thing I do, Tony, just to emphasize your point, is like when I'm talking with a seller of a property, and, you know, we have this thing called the property lead sheet, right, where we're yes. getting all the information about the property. Well, the way a lot of property lead sheets are laid out, you got their name at the top, you got their contact information, you've got their asking price, you've got what it's worth according to your realtor or whatever your source is. And then, boom, you go straight into the mortgage information. Wrong. So to build rapport, what I do, and I want to hear what you do, and I know we got to get on into this, finish up the pre-qualifying stage and on to step number three. But one thing I do is I, after framing the reason I'm calling them and stating why it is I'm calling them, I start at the bottom of the, of the property information sheet and I say, Hey, tell me about your property and what's going on with your property, because that's like very non-invasive, non-intrusive kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's all back to just build, making it really, really easy questions and questions that the seller of a property would anticipate for you to ask. I couldn't agree more, Jay. And that's, that's what makes you good at what you do. So and I pretty much do the same thing. What I do is, I, I, by the way, I, I could call a seller cold without any information in front of me whatsoever and get everything that I need to know simply by talking to them. However, in the interest of being prepared, it's oftentimes better to have, if you can have a sheet in front of you, or at least they're, they're, they're listening or their Zillow page up on in front of you. So what I like to do is, after I've gotten the permission, would you mind if I ask you a few questions? We set the stage for part number two. Part number two is a qualification stage where we find out what their needs and greeds are, what, they, what their situation is. And one of the most important questions of all is, why the heck are they selling. So what I like to do is I like to trust but verify. So I confirm the information that I have in front of me. So I say, so I see that this is a three bed, two and a half bath house, about 1,748 square feet. And it looks like it sits on a quarter acre lot of land. And it looks like it's in excellent shape. And uh, is all that correct? Or am I, am I talking about the wrong house here? I'll just say something like that, you know, just to be a little bit different. And usually they'll confirm that all that stuff is correct. The very next thing I like to do is ask, so this looks, this is, oh, this is some great psychology here. I can't believe I'm sharing. You're making me share all my good secrets here, Jay. What's up? So well, hey, look, I mean, I, you took your filter off. Me and my audience, we want to hear the goods. All right, all right. I like to apply a little bit of fun time psychology. This is what makes it fun for us when we use this, these secrets and these tactics like this. And it just, it just turns things on its head because it makes us different. I like to say, this looks like a beautiful house, Mr. Uh, Mr. whatever the first name is, Frank, for example. Uh, Jay, Jay, this looks like a beautiful house. Jay, why on earth would you want to sell this place? I, I'm curious. And then, oh just, wow, that's an excellent question. So, you want to role play, or you want me to comment on your question? Comment on the question. That was a yeah. pseudo. So, question. what I love about your question when you said this looks like a beautiful house, all right, you're already you're already indirectly complimenting them. Yes. Okay. So you're indirectly complimenting them genuinely. This is looking like a beautiful house. Why in the world would you want to sell this house? That's a so, so just so the audience understands what you're doing. So you're what you're going for is you're going for their hot button. You're going for you want to understand what is their hot button, what is their motivation, 
because we know once you uncover what the seller's motivation is, then you can keep coming back to that hot button and referencing that you have the solution for whatever that motivating situation is. So when you say to me, wow, this is like a beautiful home, nice size, you know, not, you know, good area, et cetera. Why in the world would you want to sell? That's not a question of interrogation. That's a question of curiosity. Yes. And so when you come across as a genuinely curious person about what's going on with the other person, people love to answer that kind of question when you frame it like that. You know, Jay, you met, you said the magic word right there. One of my favorite words is curiosity. Curiosity, they say, killed the cat. But really in real estate, curiosity will make you deals because it opens the door to a world of possibilities, a world of magic. And once you get, you can let the seller or the person to whom you're speaking feel like you're just curious. You're looking to see the possibilities here. I'm, I'm curious, why, why are you looking to sell this beautiful house? It just opens up things on a whole new way and it just brings you closer on a subconscious level. So let's give a synonym or two to when you say this second step out of the three is pre-qualification. What's another word or phrase that states what your objective is in step number two? Summers, when you say you're, this is a pre-qualification, you are pre-qualifying the seller for what purpose? Pre-qualifying them to discover what? What's the next step? Okay, well, basically, we're asking the questions we need so that we can find out what their overall situation is. So we move on to step three, because one fits into two, step two fits into three, okay? So we're getting the information that we need in order to segue into the third step. And once we find out what their situation is, what's going on with the house, what their needs and greeds are, and we've gotten them to share their secrets with us, so to speak, about the house, then we can transition to the third part, which is where we, drum roll, propose and close. Propose and close. So would you say, would you agree that the second step that we call, that you call pre-qualification is identifying their level of motivation? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a big part of it. So so, so you're identifying, so let's bring it home to um, real conversations. So if we're if we're calling people or someone on our team is calling people that have got their homes at Zillow.com listed or they're on Craigslist or they're on for you know FSBO.com for sale by owner.com, the majority of those people have got their homes priced at retail. Correct. Right. We know Correct. the majority of those people we're not going to be able to do business with. You know, as you and I have heard for decades. We're only going to do business with the low-hanging fruit. So this step two, and this is a question, step two in your process is identifying their level of motivation, pre-qualifying to see, does this sound so far like someone we're going to be able to do business with? Absolutely correct. So we can determine that if there's someone we can do business with, and what is their level of motivation? What is their, and by the way, a very important distinction here is we, we've got to understand that we're really probably not going to be able to do business with someone who doesn't have some sort of need, some sort of pain that we can provide the solution for. If someone were to say to you, if, if you were to ask a seller, Jay, and said, you ask them, why are you selling your house? And they say, well, I just thought I'd put it out there and, and see what the market's willing to pay me. You know, if someone's willing to come in and pay me $200,000 more than what it's worth. I might consider it. Are you going to be able to do business with that person? In all probability, not. In all probability, not. If the, if they're being honest and truthful, which a lot of people aren't. So that's why we have to have that rapport with them built so we can get the truth out of them, of course. There's no pain and there's no need for someone like that. So we're not going to convince them of anything. So we just have to make sure that they are being truthful and not screwing around with us and you know having fun at our expense, so to speak. And once you get good at this, you'll be able to get that done uh, and ascertain very quickly. So once yeah. we find out if this is the truth, it's just not really not worth staying on the phone in most cases at that level of conversation with a particular person like that, as opposed to someone who we talk to and say, why are you selling it this time? Well, I have a job transfer. I'm, I got to be out of here at the end of the month. I've had a bunch of people look at the house. They all love it, but no one's made an offer. I don't have much equity. I need, need to be out of here. And I just can't worry about this house. I need, this is my career, my life. I need to be out of here. Can you help me, please? Someone like that, we're probably going to be able to, you know, we're definitely going to be able to do something with them. 
someone like that. We're getting that house. Okay. Exactly. All right. Step three, propose and close. Yes. Propose and close. This is where we simply take the information that we've discussed with them that they revealed to us and we transition to providing them a solution that would work for them and get them what they need. Now, the way that we do this, what I like to do this is, is different than most people out there. But the way I do it is just very easy and comfortable and it just works. There's no rejection and it's a lot of fun. So I like to pre-frame, okay, prepare and pre-frame the solution by introducing a concept. I like to take baby steps along the path to closing where we want to be. If you say, by the way, the worst thing you could do, which is the way a lot of people do it, is they say, uh, well, Mr. Seller, how about I buy your house with owner financing? I mean, come on, that's horrible. Or how about a lease purchase? First of all, <laughs> how many civilian sellers out there understand what the heck a lease purchase or the, all the benefits of an owner financing are? So don't use those terms with people. They just, they're gonna go right over their head. They're gonna feel insulted because they're gonna feel stupid because they don't understand it. Or they're gonna feel confused. And we, as we all know, what does a confused mind say, Jay? A confused mind uh, does nothing. Exactly. Does nothing, says no, it says, uh, I got to go now. <laughs> That's so right. We don't use those words. We use simple, simple, simple third grade language that anyone can understand and say it in a way that makes sense. So let's do a quick role play here. I'm going to reveal my secrets on how I like to preframe and present the propose and close part. All right. With your kind permission. Okay. So, uh, Jay, based on what you're telling me, I believe I have a couple of really excellent solutions that would work for you and get you exactly what you want out of, out of selling your house in a way that's going to make a lot of sense for you. Would it be all right to share those solutions with you now? Sure. Okay, great. I appreciate that. So now, I don't know if you'd be interested in this or not, but what if there's a way we could buy your house at a price that works for both of us, gets you what you want, is fair for both of us, also works for us. We can close whenever you're ready. We'll take the house as is, so you don't have to do any extra repairs to it. Like I said, we'll close whenever you're ready. So if you need to move a month from now, that's fine. Whatever's good for you. We're very flexible. And we can also do this in a way that is really, really easy transaction. So you don't have to worry about all the hard stuff, having people come through your house and, and, and muddy up your carpets and all that stuff, as you had mentioned before. And that way, you and your family can move out to San Diego as soon as you're ready. I don't suppose something like that would work for you, would it? No, uh, sounds good so far. Okay, great. And then we transition. So now they're all set up and then we simply transition to what we're going to do with how we structure the deal and close. Now, our mentor, Ron, likes to have the big three or four questions where we talk about in the creative real estate, if we're, if we're talking about that as opposed to ugly houses and only structuring a, a deal on price. So we're going to be talking about purchase price, down payment, monthly payment, and then the term. Now, Recently, we've changed it so that we don't talk about the term until we get out to the house. How long can we get to pay off, uh, to pay you off in full? And by the way, when we're talking about creative real estate, the simple concept here, for those of you who may be new to it, is that we're talking about the seller being a little bit of being patient with the time it takes to get fully paid off for the house or to get the loan cashed out or something of this nature, whatever their ultimate solution needs to be. But in the meantime, we can make payments to them or pay their mortgage and have them take back a note for a little while and take full care of the property. It just basically works out to be a delayed cash off for the seller. And on certain circumstances, we can take care of the closing costs. We can help them net more money than if they were to sell it the traditional way with a real estate agent and a lot of other benefits that we just don't have time to get into right now because there's so many. So basically, we want to find out what their hot buttons are and key our solution based on that. It's not a presentation. It's a solution. And then we get to the point where we're asking the questions about what, their, what would meet their needs as far as price, down payment, and monthly payment, et cetera, okay? So that's how we do it. We don't necessarily pitch them an offer where we say, I'll pay you this for the house. We ask questions. If we could make this a really good transaction, make this close easy for you, what do you think the least you would be able to accept for this house would be? I love uh, how you how you frame or how you led up to what's the least you could take. So st say that one more time, how you led up to what's the least you could take. Jay, if we, if we could do all that we described for you and, and make this a really easy transaction so your family can move out to San Diego as soon as you're ready, what, what do you think the least you'd be willing to accept for this house would be? Now, notice the way I asked that, by the way. I didn't just say, what's the least you'll take? I gave a benefit or two or three. And even better, made a customized benefit which again was discovered in the qualification stage based on what they told us. 
And then we share that in the solution when we ask that question. Now they're thinking, wow, all those benefits, all those benefits, yeah, maybe I can be a little bit flexible with my price and they're hopefully gonna come down with it. And then whatever price they come up with, what's the next question we always ask after that? What did Ron teach us to always ask, Jay? I believe the question was, is that the best you can do? Boom, exactly. Is that the best you can do? But the way we ask that, we got we to inject this one more thing here. We don't just want to say, is that the best you can do? We want to, all right, name a price. Jay, if we could do that, what's the least you could take? Let's roll play. What's the least you could take? Well, the least I can take is 190000 Hmm. Is, um, is that the best you can do? I love it. I love <laughs> I, it. I gotta, I gotta bite my tongue to keep from smiling there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at, at least me as a seller, I knew you were thinking about it. Right. And you right. were considering it. And you were considering and, it. And because I paused before I asked that question, I knew you were thinking about lowering your price. Exactly. I love it, Tony. So that your th so your three magical steps in this communication process is step number one, introduction, stating your objective, and framing the call as to where you're going to go. Right. Step two is the pre-qualification process. And step number three is propose and close. I love that's, it. Yes, that's what I call it. All I can say is all we've done now is just set a really good stage for having you back on my show. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Tony, we are out of time here on this show, but I know we've got some audience members that would love to continue conversation with you. So uh, how can folks get in contact with you? And Or rather, I know how they can get in contact with you because before we started the show, I got a special URL put together to where they can actually schedule a call with you. And we'll give that out right now. And I'll give it out again here in just a moment. So folks, if you would like to continue the conversation one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Tony Pearl, I'm going to give out the website, which is www. And we'll put it right here. www.jayconner.com forward slash Tony, T-O-N-Y. But before we get that out again, Tony, why would someone want to schedule? They go to that link and they see your calendar. They can schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with you. Why would they want to do that? Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. As a way of giving back, as a way of uh, real estate, this business, and everything I've been working and studying on these past many years have been such a blessing to me. Such a blessing. I'm taking my lovely, uh, lovely wifey here to go to Cancun for a week uh, vacation. Going to be out on the beach, beautiful five-star resort, all-inclusive. So that's one of the things. I'm also going on a cruise here shortly for my 50th birthday. See the touch of gray in my beard here? I see. Uh, <laughs> you, you missed a spot. I missed a spot? Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to pluck some more gray hairs out. But anyway, <laughs> this business has been so great to me, Jay. And I tell you, as a way of giving back, what I'd like to do is offer a free 15-minute uh, chance to talk to people, your listeners, and see what I can do to help them out with their business and just give back. And I've, I've become, I'm a mentor, as we know, for many years now. And I've become pretty kind of good, kind of good at, uh, at spotting where the, the bottlenecks are and where people are having challenges and being able to figure out what they need to do to move past that and do better for themselves, make money, do deals, and just live life uh, on, on their terms. So that's what All I'm doing. Right. I'm offering a, a free 15-minute quick consultation, no pressure, no obligation. I just really want to connect with people and see how I can help. I love it. All right, folks, for those of you that want to connect one-on-one -on -one with Tony and continue the conversation and let him help you out, www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com, Tony, T-O-N-Y. My friend, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here on the show today, and I look forward to having you back. Pleasure is all mine, Jake. Thank you so much for having me. This is what an honor to be spending this time with you, my friend. Later. All right. Okay, folks, thanks for joining in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye. <laughs>